ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله واصحابه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما we start as we always do, first and foremost, by praising and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, acknowledging complete, genuine praise and gratitude belongs to Him. And so we praise Him and we thank Him for all of His blessings, for everything that He's given to us, and for His beauty, His oneness, His divinity, and His perfection. And on this beautiful special day of Friday, the day that we gather together to remember Allah, to the dhikr of Allah, to declare the greatness of Allah, we bear witness and we testify that there is nothing worthy of our worship, of our unquestioned devotion, except the one true God, Allah, and that Muhammad, Rasulullah, is his servant and messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. We ask Allah to bless, protect, honor, and compliment our beloved Prophet, our messenger, our role model, Muhammad Rasulullah, his family, friends, companions, and everyone that follows the way until the end of time. Oh Allah, include us from amongst them. Allah, he reminds us in the Qur'an, believers, have the taqwa of Allah. Shield yourself, protect yourself from the anger of Allah by doing what he tells you to do. And don't die except that you are submitting to Allah. And again, he reminds us, believers, have the taqwa of Allah. Put a wall, a barrier, something to protect you from the fire of hell. That protection, that barrier that you put up is made by obeying Allah by staying away from his prohibitions. And then he says, and speak the truth. Whoever has these two qualities of taqwa and speaking the truth, Allah will forgive your mistakes. Allah will fix and correct your actions. Whoever then truly obeys Allah and his messenger will have the true victory in this life and in the life to come. One of the addresses that Allah teaches the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of the statements that he teaches to his messenger within the Quran to say, is a very beautiful and powerful acknowledgement and a praise of Allah that he mentions in Surah Al-Imran where Allah, he teaches us and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِنْ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرِ إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Allah, he teaches us to say that you say, قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ اللَّهُمَّ O oh Allah, مَالِكَ mulk, The owner of all kingdoms, all, everything that can be controlled, you are the owner of it. تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ And you give from that ownership, you give from that kingdom, you give from that control to whoever you want. وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِمَّنْ تَشَاءُ And you remove, you take ownership away, you take authority away from whomever you want. وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ And you give izzah, might, strength, power, respect, honor to whomever you want. وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ And you humiliate, you give weakness, you give subjugation, you make them dominated. You make people like that whoever you want. بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرِ all good is in your hands, is in your department, is from you. إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ You are fully and completely capable to do anything and everything. And then the next ayah continues. تُولِجُ اللَّيْلَ فِي النَّهَارِ You bring the hours of the night into the day. وَتُولِجُ النَّهَارَ فِي اللَّيْلِ And you bring the hours of the day into the night. وَتُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ And you bring living things out of things that are dead. وَتُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ And you bring dead things out of those things that are alive. وَتَرْزُقُ مَنْ تَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ And you give and you provide and you sustain without ever having to take an account. I want us to walk through this and see the beauty of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we take some time to hear the words of Allah, to understand the words of Allah, to take guidance and inspiration, strength and wisdom, morality 
from the words of Allah. And especially as we get closer to Ramadan, this is something we should all be doing. Increasing our relationship with the Qur'an. Strengthening our bond with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, from the beginning, Allah, He says, to teach us that, Allahumma, O oh Allah, my God, my Master, the one worthy of worship, I am asking you, I am begging you, I am calling out to you. Malik al-Mulk, who are you? You have full ownership and full control over everything that can be owned and controlled. Every kingdom that is out there, every country that is out there, every planet or star or solar system or galaxy that is out there, you own it. It is under your control, under your desire, under your want. Whatever you want to happen to that, it will happen. You are the full sovereign controller. You have full authority. You have full governance over that. But then, because you have that, تُؤْتِي الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ You can give from that kingdom, from that dominion, from that ownership to whoever you want. You own the entire earth, the entire world, the entire universe. If you choose to give me some of it, then that is from you because you own it. If you choose to give everybody here something to own, clothes, food, a car, a home, that is because you own it. And if you choose to give people power, if you choose to give people strength, if you choose to give people seeming money and status, that is again from you. You own it. You own me and you own the things you gave me. Everything I have is the possession of Allah at the end of the day. He owns it. And if He gives it to me, guess what? He owns me as well. So He can give to whomever. And he can take possession, ownership, control, dominion, rulership, authority away from anyone. If he wants, he owns you and he owns whatever status you have. If he wants to take away your credentials, he can. If he wants to take away your home, he can. He wants to take away your government, he can. He wants to take away your weapons, he can. He wants to take away your money, he can. He owns you and your money. This teaches us something so important. Whatever I have... It is from Allah. And He owns not only the things He gave me, He owns me. And so if I think, why did I get this? Why didn't I get that? He says, no, 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 no. You don't have that right to ask. I give to whomever I want, whatever I want. وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ And oh Allah, you give izza, you give power, you give strength, you give authority, you give honor and respect to whomever you want. When we often talk about izza, we think of just one word of might. When we think about izza in its most real sense, this is a state that prevents you from being overpowered. So that you are, do not get overtaken. You are not dominated. You are not, you know, bulldozed over. When you think about hard, solid earth, the Arabs, they say, Ardun Izaz or Azaz. This is land that is very hard, very dense, very powerful, very solid. And so, O oh Allah, you give this izza, this might, this power, this fortified nature to whomever you want. And of course you give because you are Al-Aziz. Around a hundred times, if not more, does Allah refer to himself as Al-Aziz. The one who has full might, full authority, full control, full power, full respect, and full honor. And these two things, they go in hand. When I have power, when I have control, when I have authority, that get, allows me to do things. It allows me to tell you what to do. It allows me to make decisions. But when there is true izzah, when there is real izzah, that authority also translates into respect and honor. We can all look at Genocide Joe. Does he have a lot of power? He has, he has some worldly sense of power and money and control. But do we respect somebody that does that? Does he have any honor? Does he have any status? No. You have some physical ability to carry out something. But we don't like you for it. We don't respect you for it. You don't have actual izzah. And on the other hand, there are going to be some people who in a worldly sense, they are loved, they are respected, but do they have that power and authority and ability and might? No. And so when we talk about real izzah, this is I can do and I will do. And whatever I do is respected and justified and has status. So when Allah acts with full control, 
He says, I have the authority to do whatever I want. And I can do whatever I want. And I will do whatever I want. But that second part of Izza, and I'm still respected and honored for what I do. Because he is so perfect, because he's so grand, when he does, he does whatever he wants, and nobody can say a thing. Nobody can challenge. Nobody can push back. Because he is Al Aziz, full might, power, strength, and also full respect and full status and honor. And so you, you can give that to whomever you want because you own me and you also own Izza. You are the source of Izza. And so that feeling of strength, that feeling of power, I can only get it from Allah. And the consequence of that authority and power, that respect, can only also come from Allah. And just like that, وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاء The opposite of Izza is dhul or dhil, dhilla. That you are debased, you are humiliated, you are controlled, you have no control. You are the one ruled over and put down and pushed to the side. You are weak and made to submit. Because your izza, your authority was stripped away. And oh Allah, you can give that dhulla, you can give that dhul to whomever you want. Because if all power and authority belongs to you, you can give to whomever and you can take it away from whomever. And with dhul, there is a good side and a bad side. When I am humble and submissive, when I subjugate myself in front of Allah, I have gained izza. When I humble myself and say, Allah, I will submit to no one but you, I have gained izza. But when I try to gain izza by appeasing other people, then I will become the most humiliated person because I'm trying to follow your whims, your desires, trying to make you happy. If I try to make you happy, who has the authority? You or me. If I try to make you happy, as powerful as I may think I have gotten, I have just made you more powerful because I'm telling you, you're the one that I'm going to listen to. You're the one that has the authority. You're the one that dictates what I will do and what I will not do. So if I want honor, I cannot get honor except from the bounty of Allah, except from the treasures of Allah. And oh Allah, you can humiliate whomever you want. You can take away that control, take away that authority from whomever you want. It's your choice. Biyadika al it's all in your control. All good is in your control. And you think this izza, this, this ability to humiliate, this is a very uh, 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 serious power to have. And so we follow it up. Can somebody abuse power? Can somebody abuse honor? Can somebody abuse status? Yes. But then we say, al khair. Allah, you do not do that. You and only good comes from you. You are the source of good within your hands, within your ability, your capability, within your control is what is good. Innaka ala kulli shayin qadir. And you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. You have full control. And then he continues, he says, if, that, if I haven't proved my point yet, if you don't actually think I am Al Aziz, if you don't actually think I run the world, let me tell you. And we are addressing Allah when we say this. Many times we often get very, you know, uh, 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 loose translations about this. You bring the hours of the night into the hours of the day. What does that mean? Right now we're in winter. What's longer, day or night? Right now, nighttime is longer. When summer starts to end, Allah He adds more hours of the night and takes away from daytime. And guess what, when summertime rolls around, the, the, the first night of Taraweeh, we're gonna have time change, we're really gonna feel it, right? He's bringing the hours of the day back into the night. So night will shrink and the daytime will increase. And in the opposite, nighttime will shrink and daytime will increase and vice versa. He is so powerful, he didn't just make the sun and the moon and the earth. He made them. And then he made them orbit and rotate. And then he made the entire solar system that it fits in, the entire galaxy that it fits in, the entire universe that it fits in. He's like, I can do way more than that. And not only that, this sun, this moon, the rotation of your earth and its orbit is how you calculate your day and night. The very time that you think of, I own it, I control it, it is under my authority. That is how powerful he is. That is why everything is subject to his wish, his command. And you bring living things out of the dead. You're so powerful. You're so in control. Even the most seemingly dead thing, you can bring life out of it. We didn't exist. 
We didn't exist. And from that nothingness of our existence, from the deadness of our existence, He brought us out into life. You used to not be alive. And then He brought you and made you alive. That you look at a, de- a seed. Is it alive inside? Yes. But when you look at a seed, you think this is just some like rock. But out of that little seed, you get apples, pears, you get all kinds of trees. How many towering, beautiful things do we see from a little seed that looks like it could be a dead rock? Out of the most seemingly dead things, he brings out the most life. And just like that, he can bring out izzah and power and might from something that seemingly looks weak and pathetic and, and, and feeble. That I may feel like I have no power. I may look like I can't do anything. But if Allah gives me izzah out of the weakness of my deadness, He will give me the strength of izzah. He will give me the strength of honor and authority and respect. And he can also bring dead out of the living. That I can be someone who looks like I have power. It looks like I have authority. But inside I bring, I'm nothing but good. I have no power at the end of the day. I can see a whole tree and it drop, it's so alive. And it drops little things, those same seeds that look like they're dead. They look like they're dead. And just like that, Someone with power and respect, someone that looks like they have izza, he can give them dhullah. So that same life that we think is actually dead on the inside. And you give and you provide and you don't need to take account. Even if you have somebody very wealthy, at some point if they give you a thousand dollars, you a thousand dollars, you a thousand dollars, you a million dollars, at some point they're going to be like, wait, does my bank balance have enough? Allah gives and He 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 never needs to check, will I run out? He never needs to think, oh, did I make one too many stars today? He never needs to think, did I give this person too much izzah today? He never needs to think, did I give that person one more second of life that I do not have to give? He gives and He does not need to account. He has all the resources. And so He never needs to take account. And I want to tie these things in together of izzah that strength, that authority, that respect and how we gain that from revelation how we gain that from Quran that by obeying Allah by submitting to Allah as weak as I may seem as subjugated as I may feel as powerless as I may look if I obey Allah and He gives me izza, I have strength and authority and respect given to me by Allah and nobody can take that away. Because who gives izzah? To izzu man tasha wa to zillu man tasha. Allah, you give izzah and you take it away. Nobody else can take away my izzah. Nobody else can take away my izzah. If I am a, a Muslim man or a Muslim woman walking around town, and people see I'm a Muslim and they decide to call me slurs, they say something about Palestine, they say something about religion or about Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People may look and think this person was made fun of, this person was mocked, this person was humiliated. In the sight of people, I may seem weak and humble, humiliated. But in the sight of Allah, who is the real Aziz and Aziza? And who is the one that is really weak and pathetic? You can call me things... But on the inside, you do not determine whether I'm weak or strong. You do not determine whether I have izzah or, 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 or subjugation. Allah determines that. And so Allah, He reminds us, Man kana yuridul izza, falillahi al-izzatu jami'a. If you want izza, you desire power, you desire authority, you desire respect, then no, it will only come from Allah. I cannot appease anyone to get it. I cannot beg anyone to get it. I cannot pay you any amount of money for you to give me real izzah. Any politician can bribe whoever they want. That's not izzah. That's not real respected authority. And Allah he gives us this as a harsh reminder. There are those people who try and gain izza. They try and gain power and respect and authority by appeasing and bending over backwards for disbelievers instead of the believers. Why are they going to them for izza? Izza. Honor, authority, respect belongs to Allah alone. 
And that doesn't mean we don't speak to people in their own terms, in their own language. Right? I have a Muslim worldview, a Quranic worldview, a worldview given to me by Allah. If there are other people that don't subscribe to that, that's a separate issue. But I will speak to them about humanity. I will speak to them about injustice in their terminology. But I, what I will not do, I will never bend over backwards. I will never lose my faith. I will never appease someone who says, do this, this, and this, and this, and then I'll listen. And what they mean by this, this, and this. Why don't you forget about God for a moment? Why don't you just relax your religiosity? Why don't you just let go of, you know, your Islam thing? Why don't you just be a little bit less Muslim? Be a little bit less brown. And, th and then we'll listen to you. And then you can come talk to us. Never bend over backwards. You can speak to them in the words and language uh, 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 and custom that they will understand. But don't lose your faith in that process. Don't seek it from them. If I want izzah, it is only with Allah. Authority, power, strength, control, the honor that comes from that is only from Allah. And even when they do say harsh things to me, whether you, know, uh, you have a young man or a woman walking on campus with hijab or beard or someone doing whatever in their life, they're mocked. They're ridiculed. They're called an anti-Semite even though they probably are a Semite themselves because they're an Arab. And it doesn't make any sense and they're just criti they're oxymoronic in their entire life. They may, you may feel that their words hurt, but Allah, He tells you, وَلَا يَحْزُنْكَ قَوْلُهُمْ Yes, their words are harsh. Their propaganda is harsh. But don't let that make you sad. Will it hurt? Yes. Sometimes will it feel bad? Yes. Allah tells the Prophet, yes, I know it will hurt. I know it hurts when they say such things about you. But he says here, do not become sad. Do not take the lower footing. Because they said something, Allah is the one that gives izza. So they may mock you, but you are the one, if you stand to your faith and your principles, is the one that's honorable. When they stand in front of Allah, who will be the one with power and who will be the one that is weak? When someone who supports injustice, supports kufr, supports rejecting Allah, stands in front of Allah. And a believer stands as the opposing party in the court of Allah. Who, which, which party has izza? The believer, the one that says, Allah, this person is the one that did injustice to me. And who will Allah listen to? The one that he will give izza to. And izza, when we get it from Allah, we will get it. As Allah, He says, وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Izza belongs to Allah and Allah alone. وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ But if you follow the commandments of Allah, you seek it in the right way that Allah wants you to get it, you will also get it. وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ The messenger has gotten it and the believers have gotten it by obeying Allah, by following the commandments of Allah. As Allah, He tells, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِالذِّكْرِ لَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ وَإِنَّهُ لَكِتَابٌ عَزِيزٌ That these people, they reject this reminder that has come to them, even though this very book that has come to them with their guidance from Al-Aziz is لَكِتَابٌ Aziz is a powerful, authoritative, respected book. Find that power, find that might, find that respect by obeying the commandments in this book. Get izza, strength, honor, authority. It's not... It is real control, real power, even if I don't see it in this life. When I look at Fir'aun, he, does he have a lot of money? Yeah, does he have a lot of power? Yeah, but is he Aziz? He's pathetic. Genocide, Joe, Nehenyahu, Abu Jahl, whoever, you can name all these people. They seem like they're very powerful. They are big, fat, pathetic losers. As powerful as they may seem. But... The seemingly tiny, weak little Musa, he is the one that has real izza. For a prophet who only had one believer, someone may think, look, what did you do, O prophet? You have one believer in the sight of Allah, who is Aziz and who is Dhalil. The prophet, the one believer is Aziz, and the entire community that rejected, they are Dhalil. They will be the ones that are humiliated. How do I gain this izza? Obey Allah. He is the only source, so go to Him for it. Obey Him. Allah, I listen to you. Oh Allah, I obey you. I have subjugated myself to you. 
and now I ask you for real honor. Now I ask you for real power. Now I ask you for real respect. How many people are on this earth that nobody knows them, they seem useless. And then when they get to Jannah, the angels are like, we've been waiting for you. And how many people get red carpet treatment in this life and the angels of hell say, oh, we're waiting for you. Be from the first category. Gain izzah from Allah. Be an aziz. Become aziz yourself by obeying Allah. Be an azizah by obeying Allah. Be aziz by staying away from his prohibitions. Be azizah by staying away from Allah's prohibitions. Become aziz, become azizah, become strong, powerful, respected with status in the sight of Allah. By reading this book, by understanding this book, by obeying this book, it comes from Allah. Seek him for this power, this might, this authority. Allahumma a'izza al-Islam wal-Muslimin wa adhilla al-shirka wal-mushrikeen wa dammir a'adaaka a'adaa ad-deen. Allahumma ansuri al-Muslimin fi kulli makan. Allahumma ansuri ikhwanana fi Filistin. Allahumma ansuri ikhwanana fi al-Hind. Allahumma ansuri al-Muslimin fi kulli makan. Oh Allah, give us real authority, power, and respect. And oh Allah, deal with those people that choose to challenge you and humiliate them. Oh Allah, help all of the believing men and women that are your believers across the world, be it in Palestine, be it in India, be it in any other country or part of this world. O oh Allah, accept us. O oh Allah, forgive from us. Aqulul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا اللهم بدل سيئاتنا كلها حسنات اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم أدخلنا جنتك جنة الفردوس الأعلى بغير حساب ولا عذاب ما حبيبك ورسولك اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا في فلسطين وفي الهند اللهم كن لهم ناصرا ومعينا ومؤيدا وظهيرا وعليك بمن بغى عليهم اللهم أرنا في الظالمين عجائب قدرتك وبدائع صنعك اللهم أهلكهم كما أهلكت قوم عاد وثمود اللهم أرنا فيهم يوما أسودا اللهم أرنا فيهم يوما أسودا اللهم انصر المسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين اللهم بارك لنا في رجب وشعبان وبلغنا رمضان اللهم بلغنا رمضان والله we ask you for your forgiveness we ask you for good in this life and in the hereafter we ask you protect us from the punishment of the hereafter we ask you for جنة and whatever brings us close to it, and we ask you for protection from the fire, and whatever brings us close to it, oh Allah, forgive us, oh Allah, give your help, your aid, your victory, your support to all of the believing men and women across the world, in this country, in Palestine, in India, in any other part of this world, oh Allah, deal with their oppressors, oh Allah, deal with their oppressors, oh Allah, deal with their oppressors, oh Allah, give us might, power, strength, authority, respect, and status, oh Allah, bless us in this month of Sha'ban, allow us to reach the month of Ramadan, allow us to reach the month of Ramadan, oh Allah, Allow us to reach the month of Ramadan. We end by asking you to bless and protect your Prophet and Messenger. Allahumma salli wa sallim alayhi wa ala alihi. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Ashadu